Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome back to the stunning Castlecombe Manor House here in Wiltshire. And we're back at this location to provide you the Porsche 911 GT3 Buyer's Guide. So this buyer's guide is going to lean more towards the 991 edition of the Porsche 911 GT3. But we'll get onto that a little bit later. First of all, I'm going to provide you with a brief back history of the Porsche 911 GT3 range. Then I'm going to talk about which model we would recommend that you purchase of the GT3 range. Then I'm going to walk around the car. I'm going to talk you through some of the issues that you need to be aware of and you need to be careful of when you purchase the GT3. Then I'm going to go through our recommended specification for you. So I'm going to provide you a brief back history now of the Porsche 911 GT3. If you want a more detailed, in-depth dive into the back history of the Porsche 911 GT3, please reference my Porsche GT3 review. I'll put a link in the description below. So it all kicked off with a 996 edition of the GT3 way back in 1999. Fast forward to the latest edition of the GT3, which is the 992.1, that was released in 2021. So that's 23 years of GT3 production. Pretty impressive, eh? Focusing on the 991 model range, of the 991.1 models, there was 6,300 of those released in production. For the 991.2 model range, there was 9,500 made. Now, with regards to the, the most sought after, rarest edition of the GT3, taking away the special models, by far it's the Touring Edition, but the Touring Edition was only re released for the 991.2 model range. Now, what's the difference between the Touring range and the standard GT3? Well, they're called winged and no winged, really, because in effect, that's the main difference. There has been some focus put on some differences in the suspension, but Porsche say there is no difference between the Touring version of the GT3 and the winged version of the GT3. Obviously, this is the winged version of the GT3 we have here. However, only a third of the GT3s in production are Touring and you don't get to choose. In effect, if you get a GT3 slot, pretty much you're just happy to get a GT3 slot and Porsche decide whether or not it's a winged or no winged edition, the no winged being the touring edition. So which model range should you be going for for the 911 GT3? Well, we alluded to that already, bro, bringing here the 991.1 GT3. But before we answer that question, I've got to answer it with another question. What do you want? Do you want a manual or a PDK? Because if you want a manual, that excludes the 991.1 straight away because the 991.1 wasn't offered in the manual guise. It's the first Porsche GT3 that was not offered with a manual. So if you decide for PDK, then obviously you've got the 991.1 and 991.2 or the 992. But then you're increasing substantially in cost. For example, if you go for a 991.2, then you're looking at around a 40 to 50K premium over a 991.1 model. Now, if you've got your heart set, on a GT3 Touring model, then you'll be looking at the 991.2 model or the 992. And if you're looking at the 991.2, then you're looking at paying 120K premium over the 991.1 just for a GT3 Touring model. That is crazy. And that shows why the 991.1 range is exceptional value. Now, when comparing 991.1 and 991.2, you're only getting a marginal improvement in performance. With the 991.1, you've got 475 brake horsepower and 324 pound-foot of torque. And with the 991.2, you've got 493 brake horsepower and 339 pound-foot of torque. So you can see there it's a marginal difference. And that again shows why the 991.1 is exceptional value. Why pay 40 to 50K more if you're getting marginal improvement in performance? 
However, there's a sting in the tail. That's because the 991.1 model range will be set with considerable engine failure issues. So moving on to the issues of the 911 991.1 GT3 and the issues you should be looking out for. As I alluded to earlier, the engine, catastrophic failure issues with the MA175 model E0 series of these engines. They had conrod issues where the conrods were coming disconnected from the crankshaft because the torque on the, on the bolts, or sorry, on the nuts that connected the conrod to the crankshaft were losing their torque for some reason. Nobody really knows why, um, but that's obviously caused, that, that caused a major failure such that the conrods were smashing out the side of the crankcase and of course you were losing a substantial amount of oil, potentially fires because the oil was coming out of the crankcase. With the E1 series, which was the replacement engine after the E0, then you also had issues there because you had um, hardening issues with the cam followers. That was again an issue that they didn't know about earlier in the earlier range of the E0 series of engine and because they hadn't in effect had that engine in production it hadn't done enough mileage for them to see that that, that secondary problem existed. So the E1 series engines had problems too. Now it's not to say all of the MA175 engines uh, that were released in production had that issue and this particular engine in this in this 991.1 was changed on the production line so before it was actually released from the factory it was put back onto the production line and the E0 engine was changed from the E1 series but this engine has actually been, been performing fine. I'll point you to my 991.1 GT3 review in the description below again because I go into great detail about the engine issues on these 991.1 models but suffice to say avoid the E0 series of engines make sure you've got at least an E1 and preferably an F or a G series engine. Moving on to issues to look out for on the exterior of the bodywork of the car talking about corrosion issues now GT3's never had this thick underbody rubberized coating that normal 911s have that means that for the GT3 range, the corrosion warranty was reduced from 12 years to four years. So that's something to be mindful when buying a GT3. You'll notice that when you're driving the car because whenever you're hitting stones, etc., you'll hear them ricocheting off the body, bottom of the car and it'll, you know, if, if you're anal, it'll make, drive you around the twist because you'll think every, every one of those ricochets is a stone chip. But it isn't necessarily so. It's this rubberized coating that doesn't exist on a GT3. They're still corrosion protected, but they just don't have that thick rubberized coating. And the reason being is to reduce weight. Going around the bodywork of the car, normal things where moisture could ingress, wheel arches, run your fingers round to see if there's any bubbling. Now the GT3 is formed from a hybrid steel aluminium construction. The external parts of the body are aluminium apart from the polyurethane front and rear bumpers. Um, the passenger cabin is constructed, of, is constructed from steel and that's to provide maximum protection for the passengers. So just walking around the wheel arches look for areas where water can ingress. So you're looking at the end caps and you're looking at the main wheel arch sections, run your hands around there, have a good look around to make sure there's no paint bubbling because that will be an X amount to actually remediate that. It won't be too costly but it will be a cost. Obviously that counts for all the wheel arches so run your hands around all the wheel arches make sure there's no corrosion around the wheel arches. Not necessarily a costly fix but at least it provides you some negotiation leverage. You should get yourself a good powerful torch as well. You should just shine your torch into the air intakes and have a look at the radiators to see, just to make sure that the radiators aren't weeping fluid because that can be quite a costly repair. You shouldn't get any shrapnel that goes through these grills, but it is possible. So that's something to be mindful of. Just walking around again and relating to the actual tires. These are quite expensive tires. Now Michelin's, um, these are Pilot Sport Cup 2s. They in effect are track type car. They're not fully tracked and so they're not cup R's, but they're, they're a, a track, a road version, but more leaning towards the track. Quite expensive. Make sure they've got a good amount of tread left on them. Also, with regards to the wheels, make sure there's no curbing on the wheels. Again, quite an expensive remediation to perform. Not catastrophic and not not a deal breaker but again provides you some leverage to negotiate the price down. Moving on to this rubber section of the front spoiler this is made from quite a hard plastic that's so it's durable but this this is sacrificial so you can replace this fairly easily and fairly cheaply. So not too worried not too many worries if that's been scuffed underneath that's what it's there for it's a sacrificial part. 
Moving on to the back of the car and onto the skirts, you've got a similar type of rubberized compound that's attached to the side skirts. Again, that should be quite cheap to replace. On the rear diffuser, this section again is sacrificial, so you can replace this fairly cheaply. Again, it's hard plastic. Now PPF is, is a nice to have, it protects the paint and in effect it causes against quite harsh stone chipping but it's not a save all. This car hasn't actually got PPF on it, it's not a deal breaker so it's not essential but it's a real cool thing to have if somebody spent four, five, six k to actually have full PPF fitted or if they've just had a track pack version of PPF fitted then that is definitely a benefit. However, if you've got PPF fitted, you can't, you can't go forward with my next test. Now, I know this is gonna sound quite anal, but when I checked out my 458, I checked out to make sure none of the panels had been sprayed, and that helps towards checking to see if the car's been in any collision or had any collision damage, or had any remediation work done on the, on the bodywork of the car. I bought a paint depth gauge, and I measured the paint thickness. So you can do that, and you would be able to do that on this car because there isn't PPF. PPF prevents a paint depth gauge from functioning. You can get paint depth gauges quite cheaply, um, unless you go for the real high-end stuff that you don't really need from Amazon. So it's quite cheap to get hold of them. Also things you should be looking out for, I should have mentioned this a little bit earlier, but make sure with the Michelin tires, you've got the proper N rated tires. That N rating is specific to Porsche. So tire manufacturers make specific versions of their tires for Porsche and they are N rated. So you're looking for the N letter on the side of the tire wall and there'll be a uh, there'll be a number next to that end rating and that will be the addition of that tire so the later version the better really um, but just make sure you've got n rated tires so also when looking at supercars and we're looking at specialized sports cars like this gt3 make sure you've got all all items such as the car cover and all tool kits and all manuals included and all sets of keys and all all key code cards that may or may not need to exist with the car. So make sure that all those are included with the car when you purchase it, because they can be a right pain in the ass to get hold of later on, and very expensive if you need a secondary key cut. With regards to external bodywork color, this car is a bit dirty at the moment, but it is actually white. You'll see that most GT3s for sale are white. Obviously it's because people like their Porsche GT3s in white. But hey, here's the thought. Is it because people are specking their cars in white or they're buying them secondhand in white because they're the only ones that exist? Or would people actually prefer another color? My thoughts are, yes, you can't go wrong if you buy a GT3 in white, but if you can find another color and you're happy with that color, then that's got to provide a premium on resale because there's very few other colors out there on the marketplace when you look for, for GT3s that are for sale. So me personally, I would try and find a red or a blue color um, I tried to find out the specific names of the color range, or the color palette that was provided for the 991 GT3 range, but after the fact, it's very, very hard to get hold of these, these, these color ranges. Um, for sure, there's loads of white ones, and you, you can't go wrong with white for sure, but if you can find another color, then I would, I would definitely recommend that to keep the price high for resale. Now, moving on to the interior of the car, Porsche interiors are pretty much bulletproof. Usual things you've got to look out for are side bolster wear on the seats. These are the comfort seats. Um, looking for on the interior, there shouldn't be any major scuff marks. Look for ring scuff marks on this center console section. As you can see this is very clean and in pretty much immaculate condition. Look for ring scuff marks around this polished section of the, of the gear lever section of the gear selector. So it selects drive and neutral and in reverse and, and parking mode, etc. Look for scuff marks and scratches around on the screen. And you don't want any tears or rips on the Alcantara or on the lever top dash sections. This is all in pretty much immaculate conditions, fantastic condition. And also on the Alcantara on the steering wheel as well, make sure you haven't got any issues, any scuff marks or tears on there and around the polished section. So just due diligence, just make sure the interior of the car befits the mileage of the car. And this certainly does, this car is in exceptional condition. You will notice some scuff marks on the plastic seal cover sections here. That's to be expected. That's from getting in and out of the car because they're quite low. But and, and, and this section can actually be replaced. I'm not too sure how costly it is, but it can be replaced. So that's not too much of a, of a pain point if indeed you do get some sharp scuffs on that section. Obviously with regards to the door cards, make sure the Alcantara is free of tears and that there's no serious scuff marks on the, on the metal work on the handles and on this bright work on the side of the door cards. So moving on to the Rich Reviews recommended spec. 
Now this is in relation to resale really, so you have to be happy with the options that you specify or with the options that you purchase because obviously this is on the second hand market now. So it's, that's, the, that's the key priority for you to make sure you're happy with the options. But if you're looking for resale, this is our recommendations. First of all, we recommend going for the Club Sport Pack. Now the Club Sport Pack was a free option, didn't cost you anything when the car was originally optioned and it includes the lightweight bucket seats, a full roll cage, obviously this isn't Club Sport Pack, and also PCCB, so that's the carbon ceramic disc brakes. This actually has stills and the stills are fine, so you don't need PCCBs on these GT3s. Now it's all very well saying I recommend the Club Sport Pack, that's for resale. For usability, it can be a right pain in the ass because you've got a full roll cage in the back and you remove all this available space, all this available storage space in the back, which is fantastic for touring with a GT3. And you can tour in this GT3. Also, I would very much recommend that you go for what's called the Sports Chrono Pack. You can always tell when a GT3's got the Sports Chrono Pack by the stopwatch that exists in the middle of the dashboard. Most people want that Sports Chrono Pack and it's going to add a little bit more value from the point of view people are more likely to choose a GT3 that's got the Sports Chrono Pack than one that hasn't. Other options that you should really make sure that you're going for because the car is low is lift which is available on the center console. Now in addition with the Club Sport Pack you get what's called the six point racing harness by Schroff. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, guys. Here you can see, because this car doesn't have the Club Sport package, it's got the standard inertia reel seat belts, and these are nicely color coded in red, which is a great contrast against the black interior. So that's our Rich Reviews recommended specification. So we're gonna close out the video now, guys. If you're happy for your car to be featured on the Rich Reviews channel, please drop me an email at the address below. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this buyer's guide and you think this buyer's guide might be useful to you going forwards, then please give the video a like, very important to the channel. And if you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing, very important to do so. It doesn't cost you anything, it's free to do so and you can unsubscribe at any time. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video.